Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, we need to realize that no president comes except he is pro-Zionist. No president can come and he is anti-Zionist agenda. No president can come and he is anti-Israel agenda. Because even if he is personally anti-Israel or anti-Zionist agenda, then the deep state in the United States will not allow him to do so because this is beyond uh, a presidential norms or uh, presidential likes, okay? So it is beyond him. This is a strategic geopolitical matter connected to America and its presence and the presence of Israel. This is number one. Number two, I am still, I mentioned this last time when Trump won the first time. I am really shocked. I am really shocked. And until now, I do not find any explanation for this. A person like Trump, who is not that educated, yeah, he doesn't present this America, whether we like it or not, it is a great country. Maybe it is the greatest country. It is a superpower. It has the biggest number of educated people. It has the best universities in the world. It has the best think tanks in the world. It has the maximum number of patents in the world. It is the greatest country in the world. And it is led by a person like Trump who doesn't have such a qualifications. How why the Republicans would allow a person like him to be in power, okay, I don't have any. Why Americans allow such thing to happen? Same thing with Biden before that, an old man who doesn't know what he is doing uh, at the, at the end uh, until now, they said that maybe he, he lost it, okay? So this is another point. The third point is, brothers, it seems that now, the Republicans will win all the powers. They will win in the Senate. They will win in the Congress and, of course, the presidential uh, position. Uh, some people say that uh, uh, Trump have appointed judges and they are still among the high, co high court judges or they are still in... Uh, influential judiciary positions, which means that even judiciary will be in his hand. This, all of this, gives him uh, more flexibility to do whatever he wants to do. No one will uh, challenge him, and he can uh, proceed with whatever uh, policies he have easily, much easier than Biden, much easier even than himself in the uh, first time when he won. Also, uh, another important point, of course, we all know that Trump is a right wing. Does that mean that uh, the lefties are losing in front of the right wing? Is this in America only or is it globally? This is a big question. Some commentators say this is co a confirmation that the liberals and lefties are losing. Uh, this leads to another point, which is Europe, yeah, some commentators say that Europe now is uh, thinking deeply about the coming stage, because as we know that uh, Trump asked Europeans to pay more. He said, we are protecting you, you need to contribute more towards uh, our protection. And they, uh, they say that he is unpredictable regarding what he wants to uh, how he wants to deal with the European uh, politics. So that's why they are uh, quite worried about that. But we don't know whether this is a defeat of liberals, lefties all over the world, or this is, no, it doesn't reflect that. Uh, another important point is Russia. It seems that Russia is celebrating his victory because as you know that he tried to reconcile with Russia and also he's not in favor so far of course everything can change brothers and sisters don't say that you said this these are assumptions 
uh, or just uh, reading of the situation and benefiting from some of the commentators yeah here and there but nothing is solid so uh, there is a possibility that he will stop funding the war in Ukraine which means that Russia will win the war will Trump allow Russia to win the war easily yeah uh, is this a matter in his hand or it is a matter uh, in the hands of the deep state and the deep state in America will not allow uh, Trump to do this uh, also regarding China in China you know that Trump did not have good relationship with China he was trying to impose sanctions uh, on China so uh, China is not celebrating his victory however however a china uh, may be uh, happy that a trump is not a person who wants to you know to wage war but as i said with russia and with china i allahu alam okay i believe that how to deal with china how to deal with russia is beyond the hands of a trump or any other president Uh, this matter is in the hands of the deep state of america it is a strategic uh, decision or it is actually how to deal with china or russia is part of their uh, national strategy trump may modify or change it little bit but not that dramatically so the relationship with will china will continue as it is maybe trump will put little bit more pressure on uh, china uh, regarding the uh, uyghurs in east turkestan maybe he might give some space to the uyghurs uh, to put more pressure on china that is a possibility our brothers from east turkestan the uyghurs they should really uh, look at this uh, closely also see the saddest thing okay which is our area as yani the i mean the muslim area okay the muslim area unfortunately we are not like, like china we are not like russia we don't have a power a superpower so uh, still trump will look at us down and will mistreat us and will he can continue to humiliate some of the leaders although he might come across that he is befriending some of them he will continue like this we don't have a geopolitical power to maybe to 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 stand against his policies uh turkey is happy that he won because they were not in good terms with biden and biden as a lefty as a uh, as a lefty and as a liberal he was siding with the pkk uh, trump will not do that turkey is happy uh, i guess okay iran is not that happy because as you know that trump has put so much pressure and used aggressive language against uh, uh, iran now let us come to the main issue which is palestine yeah i believe that the issue of palestine and gaza yeah might not be in the hands of trump it might be or is likely to be in the hands of the deep state yeah and israel for america is a strategic project and they will continue support israel some commentators said that trump is not in favor of continuing the war i doubt this allahu alam yeah and even if he push for a deal of course the deal will not be in favor of the palestinians whatsoever and don't forget that uh, trump he is the one who moved the american embassy to east jerusalem uh, trump also let us not forget that he is the one who promoted the uh, uh, abrahamic accord yeah uh, he came with uh, his uh, kushner with his son in law with this and he was pushing pushing putting pressure on some arab countries to accept that to accept that and they did accept that how is that going to 
uh, be, how is that going to be uh, after, uh, you know, this genocide that is taking place against Gaza? Can he push that? Will some Arab countries continue accepting this normalization with uh, Israel? I think many Arab countries, they are willing to do that and uh, they want to do that but they might not do it now because because of maybe not ethical reason just embarrassment okay embarrassment in front of the world in front of their people i mean etc so uh, that might continue but with little bit that might continue but not as quick as it used to be before yeah Uh, many many commentators say that America now is shaking because there is like a division within America, although he won by majority, but they said in terms of their policies and because of economy, because of number of other factors, so there might be some internal division that did not come up to the service. As Muslims, unfortunately, we, it is, it is, Uh, a milestone in our history we should take advantage of that but this provides that we have a strategy we have some superpowers that can or we have strong countries that can have an impact on the geopolitical situation uh, this is how I see it of course uh, I have benefited a lot from what Dr. Sami Aryan has uh, written Uh, what Bah Khamfar has written and others. I don't claim that all of this is just uh, coming out of myself. See, my dear brothers and sisters in America, one important message. To be honest with you, let me say that clearly. I was not happy with the attitude of many American Muslims uh, during the election. What we did, we, you know, that we had the elections in Britain a few months ago. What we did, we organized ourselves and we established a few organizations or initiatives to run the show. Most of the Muslims accepted that. So we have the Muslim vote and other initiatives. And the leaders of the Muslims, most of them joined the Muslim vote. I was part of it as well. Okay. So we managed to run the elections and we decided not to support the Tory nor the, uh, the Labour. We decided not to support any of them. And when in the beginning, when we selected the three of the Labour candidates because they are good Muslims and etc., we received so many criticism against that and we withdrew our support for any Labour candidate or for any Tory candidate, yeah? And then we said, okay, either you uh, support Independent or maybe the Green or Lib Dem. And it was very successful. And we have spoken about that success. We have 50 of the MPs that we supported, they won. And we have five independent MP. It was for the first time since 1973, or maybe even before that, we had three independent candidates only. Yeah? So when you organize on a national level, you will come up with good results. Uh, Allahu alam, we didn't see this happening in America. Another thing, if you, if some of you decided to support Trump or support Uh, Kamala, you support them, okay, but without endorsement as if they are the saviors. We have seen some people celebrating with Trump, some people celebrating with Kamala, they are going full-fledged with them. No, even if we say, go for Trump or go for Kamala or go, you go for one of them as the lesser of the two evils. Still, both of them are pro-Zionism, pro-genocide. Yeah? So you don't come and you don't take pictures with them and celebrate with them as if they are the saviors and they are the, the, the right people. Okay? Now, in the future, I strongly advise, and inshallah you have many scholars, many 
uh, thinkers. First of all, coordination. Please, coordination. I believe that you should have like a think tank to decide what you need to do during the Trump period. Yeah, I cannot tell you, okay, I'm sure there are more qualified people than myself who can advise you, but you need to have like a think tank, yeah, in order to maybe uh, come up with new ideas how to deal with the, uh, with the, uh, this coming period of Trump. Uh, and make a lot of dua, may Allah Jalla wa ala help you, my dear brothers and sisters, all the best, inshallah, for you. Salaam alaikum.